right, we resume our African American History Challenge. We have two more teams from two great high schools. This is just phenomenal. We have some bright minds here in this room right now. So, without further ado, we want to introduce our two teams. Our first being Southwest Career and Technical Academy. Let's hear it for them. And we also have to my right Advanced Technology Academy or ATEC. Yes, okay, I want you to keep this, all right? All right, we are ready to roll, everybody. We have a few categories that we're gonna get through. Business being the first one. Teams, are we ready? Yes. yes. <clears throat> Teams, are we ready? Yes. Yes. yes! Very good, I like that. All right, business is our first category. Let's go to our first question. The first black-owned bank was founded on March 2nd, 1888 in Richmond, Virginia by this man who was a former slave, a Union Army officer, and a conductor on the Underground Railroad. What is his name? Atek. Uh, Reverend William Washington Brown. That is correct, Reverend William Washington Brown. Question number two, an affluent African-American community known as the Greenwood District, AKA Black Wall Street, was developed in what city and state? ATEC. Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tulsa, Oklahoma would be the right answer. All right, question number three, this free man learned the trade of sail making after the Revolutionary War. He bought his employer's business and later became the wealthiest man in Philadelphia. What is his name? Southwest. James Fortin. James Fortin is the right answer. Good job. All right, moving along in this category. This black American is the founder of Vista Equity Partners and as of November 2023 was worth $9.2 billion in assets, making him the richest black man in America. What is his name? Yes, yeah, Southwest. Robert F. Smith. Robert F. Smith. There he is. Great job. You guys are doing excellent. Okay, question number five. In August 2024, John Templeton and Fred Jordan Sr. established the celebration of what? Southwest. Black Business Month? Black History Yes, Month. Black National Black Business Month. Yes, that is the right answer. Good job. Last two questions in this category. First one, the oldest black business still in existence today, E.E. E. Ward and Moving Storage, was started by a conductor of the Underground Railroad and was officially registered in what city and state in 1881? Time. All right, time has been called by our judge. The correct answer to the question is Columbus, Ohio. Columbus, Ohio, that's a tough one. Okay, last question in this category. Greenwood was destroyed in one of the worst race riots in U.S. history. This event was called what? Southwest. The Tulsa Race Massacre. The Tulsa Race Massacre, very good. All right, that concludes our first the business category. Excellent job, guys. You all are moving very, very quickly through these. Okay, are we ready for our next category? It is classical music, opera, and contemporary modern music. Do we need to make any swaps? We're okay. All right, teams are in place. They are ready to go. First question. Who is the African-American soprano that was taught by Queen Victoria's royal organist, George Thomas Smart. A time. Elizabeth Taylor Greenfield. It would be Elizabeth Taylor Greenfield. Great job. <laughs> Question number two, same category. Margaret Bonds, a famous African American classical composer, was how old when she wrote her first work? It was called Marquette Street Blues. Yes, Southwest. She was five years old. She was five years old. It's pretty incredible. Okay. Great job. Question number three. We're still talking music. 
who was the first African-American woman to win the Grammy Award for Best Female R&B Vocal Performance? ATEC. Aretha Franklin. The Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin. Good job. All right, question number five. In what decade did Queen Latifah release the song Unity, U-N-I-T-Y? Oh, wasn't quite done yet. I'm gonna complete the question, but um, we're gonna have to let ATEC answer the question because Southwest dis is disqualified from this question. So in what decade did Queen Latifah release the song U-N-I-T-Y, confronting the disrespect of women in society? The 1990s? The 90s would be the correct answer. Okay. <laughs> Just another reminder, make sure I um, say the question in its completion before you click on your buzzer. I know you guys are ready, but just make sure you wait until I finish the question. Okay, number five. HBCUs were established largely because of segregation and exclusion of black Americans from places of higher education. What are HBCU bands most known for? ATEC. Choreographed routines that are deeply rooted in black culture and music. Yes. That's a good synopsis of showmanship. <laughs> Here we go. All right. Final question in this category. Sam Cooke was a prominent figure in the civil rights movement, as well as the singer of the iconic song a change is gonna come. What year was the song released? Southwest. Um, nineteen sixty-three. Not quite. Time. Not quite. Time has been called. Okay. Now, does the other team get a chance to answer the question? No. No. Okay. Nineteen sixty. Four. 1964 is the right answer. Okay. Okay, that's it for that round. We're going on to medicine. Do we need to make any swaps? Yes. Let's make some swaps. Let's have you introduce yourselves. Right here to my right, honey. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Um, my name's Sophia, and I'm a senior at ATAC. Very good. Sophia, good to have you. And we have? Oh, my name is Bethlehem, and I'm a junior at Southwest. Excellent. All right. Welcome and welcome. We're glad to have you. Okay, we're moving on to our next category, which should be medicine. Medicine, okay. First question, which Nevada governor declared racism a public crisis and made a commitment to ensure the state does not perpetuate poor health outcomes due to systemic racism during and after the COVID-19 pandemic? ATEC. Steve Sisolak. Governor Steve Sisolak, that is the correct answer. Let's hear it for him. Got the right answer. <laughs> All right, question number two. The National Medical Association, NMA as it's called, was founded because African Americans were barred from other established medical groups. In what year was this organi organization founded? ATEC. 1971. That's not the right answer. Time. Time has been called. The correct answer is 1895, 1895. Okay, question number three. Dr. Daniel Hale Williams was a medical pioneer. Not only did he open the first racially integrated hospital in the US in 1893, he was one of the first to successfully do this type of surgery. What type of surgery did he perform? ATAC. Open heart surgery. He did perform open heart surgery. Good job. <laughs> All right, this pioneering African American psychiatrist made significant contributions to the study of Alzheimer's disease and worked alongside Dr. Alois Alzheimer's, Alzheimer, mm -hmm. who first discovered the traits of Alzheimer's disease in 1901. What is his name? <laughs> Solomon Carter Fuller. It was Dr. Solomon Carter Fuller. Very good. <laughs> All right, an LGBTQ rights advocate, Dr. Ellen Kitch Childs, she was one of the founders of this organization. Southwest again. Association for Women in Psychology. The Association for Women in Psychology. Very good. All right, guys, last question in this round. 
All right, here we go. The National Inventors Hall of Fame <coughs> inductee's greatest contribution came in 1964 when he created the control unit for pacemakers. What was his name? Southwest. Otis Boykin. Otis Boykin. Very good. That was a tough one. I think that's the first time it's been answered all day. That was a tough one. Okay. Medicine is a wrap. We are moving on to cuisine. We're talking food and we're swapping out. And do we have any new faces over here? Oh, yeah. See? One new face. Okay, go ahead and tell us your name and what grade you're in, hon. I'm Selena Lay Hamilton and I'm a 10th grader at Southwest. Well, Selena Hamilton, we're glad to have you. Okay, everybody, here we go. Cuisine <laughs> is the category. Oh, I'm sorry, and I don't want to leave you out, sweetie. Go ahead. Um, my name's Naomi. I'm a junior at Southwest. Naomi, who's a junior, we're glad to have you <laughs> as well. Okay, both teams, are we ready? Yeah. Ready to talk food? I'm ready. I'll, I'm ready to <laughs> Anybody else like to eat? Okay, I'm in that category too, so this will be a good one. Okay, cuisine. First question. Who was the African American to first publish a cookbook in the United States? ATAC. Melinda Russell. It was Melinda Russell. Very good. <laughs> All right, second question. Roscoe's House of Chicken and Waffles restaurant is known for its unique combination of southern fried chicken and waffles and its celebrity clientele. Herb Hudson opened the first Roscoe's in Long Beach, California in what year? ATAC. 1975. It was 1975. And it was uh, Long Beach, California. And it was Long Beach, California. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, like, I'm going to get all the facts. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Number three. Who opened the first black-owned vegan cafe in Container Park in downtown Las Vegas called Simply Pure in 2013? Southwest. Um, Chef Stacy Doug. In Close enough. Chef Stacy Dugan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Question number four. Who was or what was Lloyd Augustus Hall's contribution to the food industry? Southwest? Preservatives. Preservatives. Yes. Food preservation. Very good. Well, you guys are moving through this. Okay. Question number five. Next to the last question here. American chef George Crumb of Native American and African American descent is the inventor of this popular snack in America. Did I, was it, Judge? It's okay, okay. Okay, the potato chip. The potato chip, <laughs> yeah. Okay. One of my favorites. Okay, last question okay, in the food category. Here we go. Leah Chase, known as the queen of Creole cuisine, and was the legendary executive chef and co-owner of what famous restaurant in New Orleans? That's a good question. I really like that question. <laughs> well, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> okay, Southwest, go for it. Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. <laughs> <laughs> Good try. We Time. like Roscoe's, but not the right answer. But at least you attempted, so we'll give you that. Time. Thank you, Judge. You gave chase. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys, that wraps up that round. Cuisine, great job. We're talking food. You guys know your food. Have you introduce yourself and tell us what grade you're in? Uh, my name is uh, Vangelos Kidiazopoulos and I am a uh, senior. Okay, well welcome. We're glad to have you. Everybody seated? In position? Okay, good. All right, judges, we are going to defer to you right now. If you have it, we're going to ask you for where we stand right now on the scoreboard. Southwest has 10, ATEC has Oh, oh. <laughs> Ooh, this is getting tight. I like this. Okay, here we go. Visual arts and architecture. What is Faith Ringgold best known for? Southwest. Painted story quilts. Painted story quilts. Very good. Let's hear it for her. She got it right. Okay. Question number two. Whose famous quote was the strength of the mind is no way connected to the color of the skin. That would be ATAC. Benjamin Benneke. 
Say that one time. Benjamin Benneker. Benjamin Benneker, it sure was. Yes, thank you. Question number three, who designed the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Center for Nonviolent Social Change in Atlanta? Not quite done yet, huh? Oh. So I'm gonna have to complete the, uh, the question. Southwest will be disqualified, but ATEC, you can answer. Who designed the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Center for Nonviolence Social Change in Atlanta, the Birmingham Civil Rights Institute in Birmingham, Alabama, and Harlem's Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture? J. Max Bond Jr. It was J. Max Bond Jr. Very good. <laughs> question number four. Here we are. And just another reminder. Make sure I complete the question before you buzz in. I know you're ready and you got the answer, but want to make sure you get the points too, okay? So number four, Beverly Lorraine Green is the first black woman in the U.S. to be licensed as what? A tech. Architect. An architect, yes she was. Very good. <laughs> All right guys, we have a few more questions in this category. Question number five, who designed the 16th Street Baptist Church this was the first colored Baptist Church of Birmingham in 1873. Mm -hmm. Southwest. Uh, Wallace Rayfield. It was Wallace Rayfield. Very good. <laughs> Darren McCray is credited as being the first modern graffiti artist. What is his nickname? A Tech. Cornbread. It is Cornbread. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. I like that name. <laughs> okay, last question in this category. This famous architect is known for designing more than 3,000 structures, which included numerous celebrities' homes, and was also known for drawing upside down for the comfort of his white clientele. What is his name? Southwest. Uh, Returner Woodson Handy? That's not the right answer. A-Tech. Emerson Stewart, Emerson, Emerson Stewart Williams? No, that's not um, the right correct answer okay. either. That's yeah, incorrect, I should say. The correct answer is Paul Revere Williams. But good attempts on both sides, so. All right, guys, that wraps up visual arts and architecture. We have one more category left. Military. Military. All right, are we swapping out again? All right, let's swap out. Okay, we're moving on to our last round, which is <laughs> military military question number one Christian Fleetwood was among the first men to join the USCT following the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863 what does USCT stand for a tech US color troops that's right it is a color troops <laughs> Second question, Mary Elizabeth Bauer was a freed slave who became what during the American Civil War? A tech. Union spy. She was a union spy, good job. Third question, this woman is the only known African American female to become a Buffalo soldier. What is her name? A tech. Kathy Williams. Kathy Williams, yes, that is right. You guys are moving through this one. Okay, here we go. What African American served in the Continental Army and earned a badge of honor? A tech. A grip a hole. A grip a hole. Yes, it is. Okay, guys, this is the last question in this category. We have come to the end of your round. So listen up very, very carefully. Here we go. Who was the first African American to chair the Joint Chiefs of Staff in the U.S. military? <coughs> a tech. General Colin Powell. It was General Colin Powell. All right. <laughs> Let's hear it for our two teams, Southwest Career Technical Academy and also a tech. You all did a great job, had great energy. I always saw smiles on people's faces, so I love that. All right, well, we have concluded our competition between Southwest Career and Technical Academy and Advanced Techno Technology Academy, pardon me, also known as ATEC. 
They did a tremendous job, worked very hard. We know you studied a lot of long hours and it definitely <laughs> showed in this competition. Okay, without further ado, could we please get a drum roll? Yes. Okay, so we're going to start with Southwest coming in with 12 points. They hear it for Southwest. <laughs> and we're going to turn now to Advanced Technology Academy, also known as ATEC. They completed their round with 22 points. Wow. I just want to say I love your positive attitudes. I love your sportsmanship. The camera didn't get this, but they shook hands with each other after they concluded their rounds. So we really appreciate you all for being standout students and just being good people. We appreciate you and we're proud of you, okay? So give yourselves another round of applause. Southwest Career and Technical Academy and Advanced Technology Academy. That's going to do it for these two. gentlemen we are so excited to announce the final two teams who will compete in the finale of the African American History Challenge <laughs> the two teams let me introduce them to my left Arborview High School <laughs> and to my right Advanced Technology Academy, also known as ATEC. Yeah. Now here's the thing. They're competing for quite the prize. They're competing for this mm. coveted mm. trophy. Can I get a ooh? ooh. ooh. Can I get a ah? ah. <laughs> so here's the deal. We're waiting to see whose name will end up right here. Whose name is going to be well, ATEC. 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 Well, let me tell you, in order to find out, you're going to have to join us for the finale. It's going to be an exciting competition. It's going to be held on February 16th. It's going to be on PBS Las Vegas, and it's going to air on February 26th at 7.30 p.m. and again on March 1st at 2.30 p.m. So we'll write all those dates for you and make sure that you get it out. But all you need to know for now is that you have two talented teams, the best and brightest here in the Clark County School District, competing for the ultimate prize, Arborview. Woo! Woo! <laughs> That's your cue. And Advanced Technology Academy, also known as ATEC. <laughs> now, before we wrap things up here, we want to give a special shout out to some dedicated individuals who put a lot of time and energy and invest their heart and souls into these intelligent young people that you see here today. So our review, I would like you to introduce your advisor. Okay, so we have our advisor, Ms. Hall, right here, and Mr. Bowen Sheen, the Bowen. <laughs> Let's hear it for both of them. Yes. <laughs> Do the honors on this side. I'll do it. Okay, please. Okay. Well, <laughs> Are we ready for it? Yeah. This is our incredible advisor and an absolute goddess, Miss Parker. <laughs> She's incredible. We love her so much. <laughs> Well, we are so pleased to have our goddesses on both teams representing their school. And we appreciate all their hard work. So, with that being said, don't miss the finale. It is a must see. Right? Period. Yes. Yes. Period. <laughs> so thank you for watching our preliminary rounds. Congratulations to both teams. We are very proud of them. 
And we can't wait to see you for the finale of the African American History Challenge! <laughs>